I've talked about a few things this week. I've talked about entitlement in business, but equally, it's not about, it's not what you know, it's who you know. It's about all of those things. So you can't be entitled, but it isn't just about knowing a lot of people either. Um, I've talked about what networking events are gonna look like when we come back to normal, if that's still a thing. Um, and I've also talked about not crying over spilt milk. So I've put the whole lot together into a digest. Getting asked what's gonna happen to networking events when we get back to the, the, the real world. So I thought I'd, I'd come and do a video and, and talk about my thoughts in here. And I know a load of people start videos by saying a lot of people have asked me, but genuinely, a lot of people ask me, in fact, even in the networking success program last night, someone asked the question, is virtual networking here to stay? And you know my thoughts on this if you've watched any of my videos, of course it's here to stay. All of us have found loads of benefits in virtual networking, such as not putting petrol in the car, not leaving home at 4.30 in the morning to get somewhere, and, and so on and so forth. All of the, the time saving and cost saving that comes with it. But equally, there will be a pent up demand for real life networking events. And just as there's a pent up demand to get back into pub gardens and get back into browsing in shops, I think all of that will come back. So virtual is definitely here to stay. Real life will come back. Where I think the big opportunity is, is going to be is in hybrid events. And I've already heard people talking about this, that my version of hybrid is that I think there will be networking groups, networking events that, that meet maybe three weeks out of four virtually. And then on the fourth week, they, they meet in real life, meet up at a venue somewhere and actually get to see each other. But I also think there's another there's another version of um, hybrid and actually I was really pleased last night when I was watching a Gary Vaynerchuk video and he started talking about what he thought would happen so I'm just gonna listen to that for a second. There are gonna be many events that are gonna be half Zoom, half real. A 400% four, a networking event right now I genuinely believe will be 137 people in a room and a screen with what we're all looking at right now and we're doing our thing here and then you know it's, it's mixed. I hate when people, everyone's like, it's gonna be this or it's gonna be this. There's no, there's no extreme, it's gonna be the middle. It's gonna be mixed. And I think there's a chance to make real life events far more interesting and uh, I'm excited about it. So what do you think is gonna happen? My, my business partner is a wheelchair user, so virtual events work really well for him. Um, doesn't have to worry about accessibility because it's all done from his own home. I know a load of people with hearing difficulties are actually finding virtual events quite difficult because I make sure I look straight at the camera and I'm well lit, but if people are in darkness, it's difficult to see their lips and, and so on and so forth. What are your thoughts? I believe virtual networking's here to stay. I believe real life networking will come back with a passion because people will want to get together. And I think going forward, there will be a ton of hybrid events as well. What do you think? Let me know, post in the comments below. I'm really interested to hear, and I'm in touch with a load of people who run networking events all over the country, and I know they're interested to hear as well. This video will be about a couple of things. Firstly, for the first time ever, I'm taking the advice as a business owner and as a human being a bit more seriously to actually look after myself. Um, so out for a walk this morning, looking after my diet a bit more. I've lost a tiny bit of weight, but I'm intending to lose a load more, so I'm onto that. Um, yeah, had a bit of a scare at the beginning of this year, which um, which I've posted about, and I never want to feel that ill again. Um, that was the that was the tipping point for me. Tipping points are interesting because I was talking to Brad about this this morning. Shout out to Brad, and I'm a bit of a light switch when I. When I do make a decision, I can always tell when I'm half fast about something, when I do make a decision, and then it actually happens, then I don't actually go for it, and that was the tipping point, just deciding I uh, never ever want to get to that stage where I feel that poorly again. Um, second point to the video, which isn't the first. A lot of entitlement in business. Um, it doesn't matter how qualified you are, how good you are, if you're not marketing yourself as well as the other guy, if the other guy's doing better, if the other person is doing better and getting more sales than you and are marketing themselves better and getting themselves out to a wider audience, you're not allowing your audience to see that you're better qualified, that you're better than the other person, whatever it happens to be. A lot of entitlement in business, people thinking that just because they're particularly good at what they do, that they should be getting the sales, that it's not fair 
that the other guys get in the sales. <laughs> Make sure that you're marketing in the right way. And you can tell if you're marketing in the right way because you'll be getting sales. Um, there's an easy metric for you. Um, if you're not, you aren't. If you're networking in the right way, you'll be making sales. If you aren't, you're not networking in the right way, which can mean a whole load of things, but a load of entitlement. People thinking that just because they've got the certificates, just because they've got a pretty office, just because whatever it happens to be, they should somehow be entitled to more sales than the other person. If the other person's marketing themselves better, if the other person's networking better, if the other person's putting themselves out more and they're getting more sales than you, you need to look at yourself and what you're doing rather than feeling jealous of them. Hope all that makes sense for a very cold Monday morning. Um, had a conversation earlier in the week with someone in business who had made a decision that hadn't worked out and he was taking my advice on it and my advice was move on. Um, some decisions work, some don't. The important thing in business, in, in my opinion, is to try and make the right decision but if it doesn't work out, make another decision and move on from it. Make a decision as to what you're going to do about the decision that you've made. Make a decision about what you're going to do next and and moved up, move on. Don't cry over spilled milk day, as as well as being about not getting upset about the things that, that haven't worked out, I think that's something we need to get used to in business, in networking, in, in when we're putting our content out there, is being comfortable and being confident that some stuff won't work out, that some decisions we, we make will absolutely bomb, that we'll launch a programme that no one will be interested in, that we'll put a piece of content out there that don't work. But if we don't do all of that stuff then we'll never get to the stuff that, that does work. I spot some people holding themselves back so much, never making a decision, never pulling a trigger, never putting that piece of content out there, that they hold themselves back, not realising that me and a load of other people have made some terrible decisions in my time. I've put some content out there that absolutely bombed. And if I hadn't done that, I'd have never got to the stuff that did work, the programs, the courses that did work. I'd have never have got to the networking retreat because I held back on that for a, a long time before I put it out there. I'd have never got to speaking on stage because at first I was so worried about what people would think about me. Don't cry over spilled milk. Don't cry over the stuff that doesn't work. But equally, be prepared, be confident, be happy to do stuff that might not work because that's how you get to the stuff that does. Um, hope all of that makes if sense. If you only get in touch with people when you want something, whether that's to sell something to them, promote something, ask them to share something or whatever, people do notice. They might not tell you they notice, but they're getting bored of it and they might unsubscribe or just not pay attention. It might sound like I'm going to contradict myself from something else that I've been talking about even earlier on in the week, but I wanted to explain myself better. Whenever I talk about networking to someone, people always say, oh yeah, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I've been working with some university students and I think that's really belittling to the work that they put in, that they then get told it's not what you know, it's who you know. It's what you know and who you know and what you do with both of those pieces of information or what you do with all of those things put together, which is important. It's really important to be good at what you do. It's really important to give value to your audience, to your clients, really particularly. It's okay to shout about that and you absolutely should, if you're in business, shout about it. But to say it's just who you know really undermines, belittles, whatever's the right word, um, not just the stuff that you need to know, the knowledge that you need to have, the expertise that you need to have, but also how you apply who you know, what you do. Because just having a great big address book full of people, having gone to a lot of networking events and knowing a load of people, that's not the important thing. It's what you do with those relationships along the way. So yeah, a bit of a rant. It's not just who you know, and it's not just what you know. It's those things put together and learning what to do with those things when you put them together. Um, as ever, I hope that makes sense.